Okay, in this lesson here, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at force paths and prescribed paths. Logan? All right, so basically we're just going to be extending the network some more off the edge where we're going to go through the door. So we've had these path nodes on the edge here. What I want to do now is take a look at the floor below. As the goal here is going to be to set up more paths so the bot will jump down to the ground and take off running towards the elevator that's over in the corner. We'll get to that later. Okay. But anyway, I want to go ahead and just start off now by on the floor near these path nodes, add some more. So I'll say... Add a path node there, and see how this is. Let me turn static meshes back on so I can view this. Move that out just a little bit so the bot will have to jump down to get to that path. And then add some more on the ground as well. So add another path node. And I'm probably going to be doing a lot of rebuilding and tweaking just to see how this is turning out. So if I rebuild between those, there's no path there yet. This would probably be a good place to test the, uh, the force paths is between these two. Okay. So what I want to do first is check the path I'm going to be forcing or running to. Let me grab the properties on that one. And go to its object. So this is path node 26. So if I go to the one I'm trying to force from, I can go to its navigation point under force paths and say path node 26. So that should force a connection between those two and possibly make the bot jump off. Though this may still be invalid because check out why it wasn't building before. Uh -huh. It's actually going through geometry, so this could cause problems. If I take this one now and move it out some. Something about... Or maybe even move take the, the top one, one and yeah, move it closer to the one. edge. Just drag that out a little bit. Rebuild, see how that's working. So now we've got that one set up. And possibly the same thing with this one. Move, just, just move it closer to the edge. Just zoom in up on it a little bit. Select it and... Maybe something like that possibly grab this one too. So again, this is getting some more just general pathing and tweaking. Uh, rebuilding paths and see how it's working. So we've got that. And that one doesn't quite want to connect. Let me show you. As a matter of fact, that one might be a better one to force to since it's not wanting to connect. Let me just see real quick. If we go back to this first one and take off the force path if it's building to it not now. Okay. So none or zero mm. or delete it out. And let's see. Various ways we could tweak this, maybe just pulling these out a little bit more. Because, yeah, there we go. That's what I was talking about. It is a narrow path between those, uh, indicated by blue, but it's a path nonetheless. Also, it's a one way path. It was smart enough to build that the bot could jump down. So we've got this one. But you don't have one a line. So you got the arrow down there from so the So we're blue. pointing to this guy, but not back up, which makes sense. It's just automatically smart enough to detect that, sure, the bot can jump down. That's easy. But. You can't jump back up uh, there, uh, not normally anyway. Okay. So let me drag this one. And let me test the forced one just between these two. Let me try forcing the path to uh, path node 27 and just to see how this will turn out. So back under navigation point, force paths, say path node 27 instead. Mm -hmm. So force a connection. Now he may pr uh, prefer one way or another way, but we'll look at ways of tweaking that in just a second. I'm going to extend the path just a little bit more, and then we'll go ahead and check it out and see how it's working. So maybe halfway over to the left. So we've got a little bit of a network set up now. So now, of course, the more and more path nodes that you add, the longer the rebuilding time is going to be for path nodes, right? Right, as it has to... Uh, it has just various things it has to calculate to... Uh, so right there where we've got build paths, right next to that, we've got build, build change, change paths. paths. So that, Which yeah, as your network becomes larger and larger, you may want to start looking at using that one as opposed to... Especially like one. we were seeing just a second ago where you're tweaking a single path node, one troublesome path node, just trying to get one path to connect, move, rebuild, move, right. rebuild. Right, exactly. So, so yes. it's just a, 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 another uh, workflow tip, if you will, just to help speed you up, especially when uh, you're dealing with large networks. Now, this isn't a large network. This is just a very small sample navigational network, if you will. That's right. But um, <laughs> you should see some of the ones that come with the levels for uh, I mean, Unreal Tournament. <laughs> once you got the level full of paths, because you have paths covering everywhere you want to get to, which the web will start to it'll start to spider web, connecting every single path to every other valid path. Exactly. So with that, let's go ahead and see what the bot's doing now, and we'll look at possibly tweaking this out a little bit more. But just play the level real quick and see what, he see does. what the bot thinks. So... Spawn in. Play. Ghost out. Oh, yeah, by the way, the the keys have been rebound. Yeah, another, another thing is you can actually go within Unreal Ed, open up the advanced properties, and set keys from there if you're worried about the any file being overwritten. So, ghost it out. 
Fault spawn, fuse vault. Through, through the door. Back here. Maybe back this way. Possible to do the show debug. I mean, it's possible that he didn't really see anything he wanted to get to on the other side. You could move one of those shades. Oh, he's going this time. And down he goes. You notice he jumped to one of the nearer ones, not the uh, the one closer to the side. We could take a look at possibly doing force paths or prescribed paths now. And now he's got a problem. <laughs> There's nowhere really to go. So he's basically stuck in nowhere's land. There's nothing interesting to go to, so he's just going to wander around a bit more. And he can't get back up because it was a one-way path down. Right, so this is in the end where you just need to go and start building a path back out through the stairs or the door, outside, back up the ramp. Exactly. And this is where you get into a final complex network. So with that, let me actually go back to Unreled and take a look at the way he was using those paths and which one he really used. From the looks of it, he took one of these diagonal ones. As a matter of fact, he could have taken the forced one there. It looked like it was the forced one. So, let's see. So, forced paths are just simply a way of actually constructing a path between two path nodes. Right. In some cases where you really want a path connecting something, often right. in a jump case, um, and it doesn't automatically build one, mm -hmm. or you want him to prefer that way. If he's, if he's near that path, that would force him to take this one path. Right. Now let's take a look at actually reversing the effect, going back to this one. And instead of a force path, let's cut that out and set it to a prescribed path. A prescribed mm -hmm. path will block that path. Basically, once we rebuild, it'll turn red. And now it's set up. It's basically saying, telling the bot not to use that. And as I was saying before, if you took two that were close together, like we, if we prescribed the path in between there, these two on the sides could actually path together because it'll no longer see this connection as a valid path. Right. So with that now, he should take one of the other ways since... Yeah, he should, she should run out this way to grab one of these since this has been blocked off by so the So bottom line is this, you know, as your networks become more and more complex, and as you said a second ago, everything's trying to connect to everything, creating this large spider web effect. There may be situations where you've got all these connections going on, but you don't want a bot to take specific paths, and this is how right. you can go He runs too close those. to something dangerous, jumps off where he shouldn't, or takes like the same path over and over again, just block off one section and let him take the rest of the so network. So this just gives you that one more element of control, if you will. Exactly. Load this up. One final test for the section. So, let's see. Also, I'm going to go ahead and do the show debug first. Play. So that's ready to go. And go stout. Bot. Do the bot. Also, what it appears is the show debug is now showing more information just about the game. <laughs> Possibly not. Again, yeah, it would have. It'll help more once we get to the final section where he has an extra item once he's down there. Uh, an yeah. item of in an interest. There you go. There we go. The forced path that he didn't fall, and then the uh, or prescribed path that he ignored. Yeah. So he had to take one of the other paths. Right. So with that, that uh, pretty much wraps up a bit more advanced uh, bot navigation. Excellent. All right, everyone. Thanks.